We got a, uh, a message at the Marriage Foundation. We have counselors who, as a free service, will help you. And this was sent many years ago to us. My name is Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. And I'm going to read word for word this particular message about a woman who married a man. And well, let, let me read it. And bear in mind that I'm going to read it now as if for the first time, and I'm going to respond to it. I think you're going to get a lot out of this. It really shows how we are at the Marriage Foundation, very positive towards marriage, but in a way that is not commonly done in the world because of all of the Western psychological thinking that has corrupted marriage. So here we go. It's from T. Message. My husband and I have only been married a month when he told me that he does not have feelings for me anymore. He told me that he is not in love with me and looks at me disgustingly. Whoa. He told me he wants to date other women because he has only known me for about nine years. <laughs> only nine years. I do not know how to feel about this or why he even got married to me now. He is 35 years old and we never lived together. He had always told me that he knows what he wants and I am all that he wanted. I feel like living together and adjusting to things turned him off from me. In a month, I also did react emotionally and frantically as I noticed he was more distant with me, which did not help the situation. He separated from me into the second month of marriage and is now living with mom. He told my family as well that he doesn't want this marriage anymore. Yet he needs time to file for the divorce. He has not contacted me at all. Not even to wish me for my birthday. I'm devastated. I'm not sure if there's anyone else in the picture yet. He denied having someone else to me, to my family, and to his. When I mentioned counseling, he told me that he does not believe anything will change and that he does not want to quote unquote sacrifice his life and happiness. I'm not sure how to re-cooperate from this anymore. I'm not sure what she means. I do not want to accept that this is over in a month. However, I can't force someone to love me or even want to fix this. Wow, this is a really, and I'm going to post this in the description part of the video so you can read it. I'd love to see what you come up with as a response to this. Um, I will share my thoughts with you, but I would also like to tell you what I would tell her. Of course, I don't know all the particulars. But what I do know is that after knowing each other for nine years, he said it was over. I don't know why he married her and waited a month. It's inconceivable to me that something happened in a month that would turn him off to her. Uh, to this degree, I just can't find a way to put the blame on her. Now, it would be different if she said, you know, he discovered that um, I'm a pedophile or he discovered that um, I have a girlfriend on the side or something that would be a good reason to end the marriage right away. But after nine years, it's hard to imagine that he didn't know her really well. So what I would say to her is 
life is tough and this is a great example of how weird things can be and you are way better off that he left you after only a month than if he waited six months or a year. Now, that being said, yes, you have made mistakes. Just about everyone makes mistakes in marriage. Even us pros, we make mistakes. We're not brought up in a world that understands marriage. We're not brought up in a world that understands relationships, that understands proper behavior. It seems like the moral code is up for discussion by some people. It seems like truth and integrity are when it's convenient. So who can say? Who can say? I would pray for this guy, I would still love him, and I would move on. I can't find any fault on your part for his leaving abruptly like this, even though I don't know the whole story. Some people may give him the benefit of the doubt, but I don't because there's an obligation after a certain period of time to keep everything on the table. You don't just up and leave. The rule number one in marriage is loyalty. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily is the wrong term. I'm sorry, I'll retract that. It doesn't mean just fidelity. It doesn't just mean you don't cheat on your spouse. Loyalty is a, is a big word. It means respecting the other person and acknowledging their right to have you present, to have you communicating with integrity and with love. Loyalty and love go hand in glove. So she wants to take part of the blame. Um, she said, um, I feel like living together and adjusting to things turned him off from me. I did react emotionally and frantically. So it's true. This is another problem in our world. We are not taught about free will. We're not taught about how our mind works and how we're obligated to control it. We don't learn its functions. We don't learn about habits. We don't learn about inner thoughts and reactions. And this is a huge deficit. When you're about to move in with someone to love, cherish, adore for the rest of your life, people are not equipped. It is amazing that it's only a 51% divorce rate. And that may sound like crazy. And the truth is, most couples who are still together are not all that happy. Even though you get married specifically to be happy and specifically to feel unconditional love. Well, I'd love to get your comment, what you think. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video, and visit again. And visit our website, themarriagefoundation.org. You ought to learn yourself how to be married so that you get those benefits. They're right at your fingertips. They really are. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded The Marriage Foundation. Blessings to you. Thank you and take care.